very brave moment for our, our dear colleague, Amy Robach. She's one of the uh, new staffers having a mammogram right here. This is called a Mammovan. It is Amy's first. She's sharing that experience with us right now. As it happens, she began the process with a consultation with the technician. And as you can see, uh, here's why she decided to take this step and share it with all of you. So when ABC producers called me last week and asked me to have a mammogram on live national television, my first instinct was, no way, never going to do it. I'm 40 years old. I've never had a mammogram. I've avoided it. And I started thinking, wow, if I've put it off, how many other people have put it off as well? I went in to see Robin, who is a breast cancer survivor and thriver, and she said, you know what, Amy? If one life is saved because of early detection, it's all worth it. I'm going to do this. And so, Robin, this one's for you. Amy, no, 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 this is for, for everyone. And I remember when we had that conversation just a, a couple of days ago, and we're so thankful that Amy is sharing this with us to show everyone what it's like to have that all-important mammogram. So much confusion about this crucial test. Amy went out to talk to women to find out what they're thinking. Do you know what age is recommended by doctors to have your first mammogram? I have no idea. Is that 40, maybe? Something like that. Early 30s. 30? 35. Such a highly emotional and personal decision, yet with revolving recommendations on breast cancer prevention, many women are left confused. Here is what you need to know. Mammograms are the number one recommended detection method, but there are varying opinions about when. Some organizations recommend age 40, when the chance of getting breast cancer increases, while others say once a year starting at age 50, when breasts tend to be less dense and give less false positives. But all agree talking to your doctor about your risk factors is critical. We have different phases in our lives, and the recommendations really are going to have to be keyed to those different phases. Most importantly, get to know your breast. Our own Robin Roberts and other survivors like her found a lump through self-exams. And though we know early detection works, sadly, not everyone has access. The black-white disparity in breast cancer is greater in 2012 than it is at any time in our history. In fact, 61% of white women report having had a mammogram versus 46% of racial and ethnic minorities. The hope is changing awareness and accessibility will lead to prevention. And again, Amy, uh, Amy is wrapping up her first mammogram here in the Mammo van, and we'll go to her uh, results will be sent directly to her doctor. And before she comes out, let's turn to Dr. Jen Ashton. And I know you're very excited about this day because it brings awareness in that. And, and when it comes to mammograms, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of myths out there right. and, and, and legitimate concern right. as well. And you know, I think one of those, it, it's, it's a concern, is about the fear of the procedure. It's so much on women's mind. I hear this from women all the time. And I think what a lot of women will say is smaller breasted women, there's this discomfort because the procedure for a few seconds pinches the chest wall, it pinches mm -hmm. the skin, it catches ribs. Larger breasted women, they'll get more compression of the breast, but they have to understand that's a discomfort that lasts for seconds. You have to ask yourself, what does it need to happen to get through that fear and, and get the benefits of finding out that the mammogram has been done? It's very, very important. I wish that we could send this mammo van all across the country, especially in underserved communities, because right. there are many women and men that are watching going, yeah, you know what? I'd love to get tested, right. but I don't have insurance. I can't afford it. It's really a very, it's a, it's a legitimate problem. Absolutely. And, and we're not getting access to all the women who want to be screened and need to be screened. So what women out there need to know if they do not have insurance is these vans are present in many states in the country. People on these vans can help you get access. You do need a prescription because you need to have some follow-up and right. those laws vary state by state and the CDC also has programs in every state. So if you want to get one, do not give up. Be proactive. Absolutely. And there are also different types like um, Amy's doctor suggested that she get the 2D, not right. 3D. So people are hearing a lot about 3D. Radiologists with whom I spoke said it's probably going to be the way of the future. It gives a prettier picture. Um, it reduces recalls or callbacks for, for images that we can't see very well. But the most important thing on any mammogram, whether it's 2D or 3D, who's reading those films? Yeah. The radiologist reading those images can do just as good a job with a 2D yeah. as a 3D. <laughs> yeah. How are you, honey? You did it. Yeah. How was it?
was it? Honestly, I, I was prepared to say exactly how it felt. And it hurt so much less than I thought it yeah. was going to hurt. It was like nothing. Right. My LASIK eye surgery was much more painful than this. And they say that's easy. Aren't you so glad? Because you said like a lot of people, you put it off. Your doctor said at the beginning of the year for you to have it. So I talked with her yesterday. She actually reminded me it was October of last year wow. that she gave me the wow. prescription. And then I lost the prescription. No, I, and then life gets busy. Uh -huh. And you think, I don't right. have a family history. Is it really that pressing? And then you told me that those staggering uh, numbers. I gotta tell you, she was so nervous this morning. <laughs> she is so happy right now. I get to see the I relief. Know. The, the relief in your eyes. There's tears yeah. in her eyes. Yes. She did it. But I want to say something, Robin and Amy, about young women because it's very important. You can't talk about a 40-year-old getting a mammogram without talking about breast density because we right. hear that all the time. Are you dense? Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is legislation now in many states requiring the, ma the mammography report to say if your breasts are dense. Very common in young women, but guess what? You could be 70 right. and still have dense breasts. Right. So it should be included on the report and then you should ask your doctor if a sonogram or ultrasound should be done as well because that can be very useful when you have dense breasts. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was not de detected by the mammogram. It was by the, the ultrasound. The ultrasound. Yep. Exactly. Very important. So, very happy for you. Your, your doctor is going to re receive the results. Yes, that will be between the two of us and Absolutely. we'll consult within a day or two. We okay. get the results back. So very happy. thank you for oh, no, no, uh, no, no. pushing me in the right direction. She Robin. did it. She <laughs> has made a commitment to prioritizing, yes. uh, prioritizing her breast health. We want you to do yes. the same by taking the pink pledge, affirming that you're going to get the information that you need about breast cancer. So we'd love to see you go on our, our website. But right now.